Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Um, as you can see by this title, I'm pregnant. <laughs> I don't even know where to start. This is going to be a pretty long video. I figured I would just put as much as I can into this first video because by the time I um, upload it, I will be well into my second semester, I keep saying semester, well into my second trimester, um, and there's going to be a lot more updates um, coming after this with hauls and, you know, other stuff like that. So I thought I would just make, like, one main video with everything, um, what we did differently, um, when I found out, how I felt. Um, and just how it's going so far. So to, to start it off, to premise it, um, if you're new to my channel, if you just recently found this video, also I'm really sorry about my hair. Um, I'm washing it tomorrow. I didn't think it was this greasy, but it's really bothering me. So I'm going to try not to touch it a lot. Anyway, if you're new to my channel and you just found this video, this comes after a um, a few videos of me talking about my infertility journey. Um, my husband and I, we have been together for over 10 years now, and we've been married for three and a half years. Um, I was ready to have a child when I was in, like, high school. I knew I wanted kids ASAP, um, like, I knew that I want a big family. Um, my husband knew he wanted kids, but he didn't, you know, want them right away after we got married. Um, so, got married, and, you know, we kind of talked about it, and he's like, I just want to be married for a little bit, and I was like, that's, that's fine. In, in my head, I was like, I want a child now. <laughs> I was like, that's okay, like, it's not fair of me, you know, to pressure you or anything like that. I, I know we're gonna have kids. Um, so about a year into our marriage, we started trying, um, six months into it, nothing happened. And I was like, that's really weird. I know it can take up to a year. I know not everybody gets pregnant right away, but I, something just felt off. Uh, made an appointment with a doctor. She kind of dismissed us, said, come back when you've tried for a year. We did that. More information on that is, um, in a previous video. I will link it either up here or at the end of this video. I'll make a whole playlist of my infertility journey too leading up to this video. Um, eventually, well, in January of 2021, we um, switched to doctors. I had my first appointment with her, which was just like a checkup and a really quick chat um, about my history. And I had to get a pap smear done. My next appointment was um, just a lab to get my vitamin D level, my, I, I don't even remember anymore. I think I have it in my HSG test video um, of the lab that I got done. And then I got an HSG test done, which I have a whole video on about that as well. And my HSG test, I think I can tell you exactly when that was. Let me look at my calendar here. HSG test was on February 12th, 2021. I had my last period on February 3rd through February 6th. Called my doctor when I got my period, got my HSG test on the 12th. I wasn't working during this time. Um, that's a whole convert, like a whole thing that me and my husband decided that I would take some time off work. Um, and apparently it was the best decision that either of us could have made, honestly, because I was able to really take care of myself and really take care of my body and learn about my body. Because every time I would work, it's just kind of the American thing to overwork yourself. And work is number one priority, you know? So I took this time that I had not working and focused on myself. And for the first time in two and a half years, 
I caught my ovulation by myself. Now, I did try previously to track my ovulation. Um, I don't ovulate on day 14. And I would, it's really hard to track your ovulation. It's really, really hard. You have to catch it at the right moment. You have to test at the, you know, right time. Don't drink too much water. It's this whole thing. Obviously, it's very scientific, but it's so, so hard. And so if I never ovulated by day 14, I was like, I don't ovulate. And that, I, that feeling, that thought was just, um, I thought it, you know, made sense, especially when, you know, my doctor was like, oh, well, we're going to put you on this medicine, Clomid, that does make you ovulate. This was my old doctor. So I was like, I don't ovulate by myself. I'm never going to have a kid. Whatever. But I caught it, and I ovulated on day, is this 17? Let me count. Seven... Yeah, like 16 or 17. Yeah, day 17 is my ovulation. And I caught it. And we did the dance, we did the big dance. That day, the next day, and the day after. Um, that day, I think we did it twice. The next day, we did it twice. And the third day, we did it um, once. We did not baby dance the day before, but we did two days before. So we did that. Um, now some of the things that we did differently, um, obviously I finally caught my ovulation. So that was like the number one thing. We were so excited at that point. I was like, you know what, whatever happens, like I finally got a positive ovulation test. I saved all of my tracking from February. Like I tracked from the day I got off my period to the 19th and a couple days after. Um, I'm getting to here yet. Um, and um, so we did that. Um, we did use pre-seed um, each time. And this, this part is silly. And if you look it up, doctors will be like, there's no proof of it, but we did it anyway, cause internet um I had my legs up um like I I um put like a pillow under my butt to just like lift my hips up a little bit and get the stuff flowing down <laughs> so for about like 10 minutes after each time I put my legs up um we did try that before and I was just so annoyed I was like it's not gonna work like it hasn't worked I was on Clomid it didn't work then doctors say that you know, it's not scientific. I just did it. Um, I also, this also might sound a little silly to you if you don't believe in it, but I did, I did yoga for about three months up until February. And then after just like regular yoga, and I'd work out here and there. And then after my period in February, I started doing fertility yoga just look it up on YouTube. There's videos from like five minutes to half an hour to an hour long that you can follow and do. It's very easy. It just assists in, you know, blood flow to the uterus and all of that. I did that. I followed just like fertility yoga, boosting fertility. I did like mindfulness and meditation, just anything that I possibly can. Like we've been trying for two and a half years I think we were both getting very unmotivated. I definitely was. I was like, what do I need to do? It sucks when you have to focus on it that much to, you know, have your body do a natural thing that it's supposed to do. Um, but I did that and I did fertility yoga and there is this one lady, I will link her um, or Put her YouTube channel name in the description. I think her name is Brittany, Brittany something. Um, but I'll, I'll put it in the description box. And um, she has this whole series from like for fertility yoga from your period to your ovulation to your luteal phase, luteal, I don't know how you say that. 
and after that and I followed her I did all of that and <laughs> um then we didn't do anything after the three days after I ovulated okay so at that time I was like I can't be home anymore I am bored like it's just better if I get a job so I applied for a job I just think this is so funny okay that's why I'm inserting this that's everything that we did different by the way this month like it really it to get pregnant it, it it was things that we did previously but it was like on it like we did everything together all at once some people can just get pregnant like that some people unfortunately can't and you have to think about it and do everything and honestly I don't even know if that was what had worked because like I said last month was the first time ever in two and a half years that I actually caught my ovulation um so I didn't change my eating habits that much I just incorporated more fruits and vegetables and I tried to eat out less uh like fast food and stuff and just tried to put healthier stuff in my body that I used to not really care about or look at before um so I applied for a job I got an interview literally almost a week after I ovulated okay so I ovulated on February 19th I had an interview on February 25th no way in he double hockey sticks did I think I would get pregnant this time around I really did it me getting a positive ovulation test was enough to carry me for the next year I know and even my doctor told me and like I said in the HSG video she said that your chances of getting pregnant after the HSG test are higher I just I was not expecting it I was not expecting it one bit but <laughs> on Thursday February 25th I woke up at like 3 30 in the morning with my husband because he had to go to work I had my interview at 8 in the morning that day I was so dizzy and lightheaded and nauseous oh my holy cow I was not okay I almost threw up I've I have woken up one other time like that before but not to that degree and now when I look back and I think about it that time before I don't even like I don't remember when it was or anything but I remember waking up dizzy and nauseous not to that degree but that could have been a chemical pregnancy um but that was six days after I ovulated and in the back of my head I was like am, am I pregnant and my husband's like are you dehydrated or what later that day he was like Oh, how soon can you start you know feeling pregnancy system symptoms and I'm like mm, no but in my head I was like that I've never felt that before and I'm like looking at my period tracker and everything this was 6 DPO I did not take a test I went on with my day that whole entire day I was just like off um, but as the day went on I felt better I did eat I still felt a little nauseous but um I never threw up or anything I was supposed to get my period on Thursday March 4th and that entire week so the week of um the week so Feb February 25th is I'm pretty sure the day that I implanted it was 6 DPO and I'm, I'm like 95% sure that was the day I implanted, if not like the day before. I don't know. But I'm like, that had to have been something. Um, 
And so, let me tell you this. I started my new job on Monday, March 1st. I still don't know that I'm pregnant. Um, I feel fu I feel normal. Like, after that, I felt totally normal. Normal on um, Tuesday, March 2nd. Wednesday, March 3rd. I started getting, and I had, I did have some spotting, so I think Monday and Tuesday I had spotting. I have this all, oh no, Monday was 10 DPO, I had no spotting. Tuesday was 11 DPO and I had a little bit of spotting, very little, just when I wiped. And I would usually like spot here and there before my period came and I texted my husband, I was like, I think I'm going to get my period, I'm sorry, like... He's like, it's fine. We caught your ovulation. We'll just try again. Wednesday, March 3rd, there was no spotting and I was cramping. And in the back of my head, something was like whispering at me, like, you're pregnant. Like, it happened. But I'm, I'm, in, I'm still, like, I've done it before. I've taken the test before my period came. It came back negative. I, I just couldn't see another negative test. Like, I was happy enough seeing a positive ovulation test. I just didn't want a negative. I was like, no, I am going to wait. I have had instances before where my period was four days late, and it still came. I'm just going to wait until it's, you know, supposed to be over. Thursday, March 4th. <laughs> Again, I'm at work all day and I'm like feeling weird cramping. I'm just, it's different. Like it just feels different. And in my head again, it's just like, I think I'm pregnant. Like I, I, I just have this feeling. I think I'm pregnant. Um, and I work until four. My husband sometimes gets off before me, sometimes he doesn't. So I was like, I am, if I get home before him, I'm going to take a test. If it's negative, I'm not going to tell him. You know, what's the point? If it's positive, then it's positive. I get off work and I come home and he's home. And I'm just like chilling out, whatever. And I go upstairs because I really have to go to the bathroom. I've also been having to go to the bathroom a little, like, a little more. And I'm like, I can usually, like, hold it. Even if I do have to go, I can hold it. It's not a problem, but, like, I have to go. So I go, I, I go to the bathroom, and I don't sit down to pee yet. I have my plastic cups downstairs. And I didn't want to grab one because I didn't want him to, like, know just in case it was negative, And I didn't want to, you know, disappoint him. So I grabbed one of my glass, like, small glass jar containers that holds some of my, like, makeup Q-tips. I was like, you know what, I'll toss it. I don't care. It's from the dollar store. And I take the test. I take a little Amazon pregnancy test that came with my ovulation kit, my Pregnate ovulation kit, and stick it in. I'm washing my hands. I wash my face off because I wear a mask all day. And I look, I'm like looking at the test while um, I'm washing my hands in the control line. Test line? Control line. Control line comes first and I see it and I'm like, it's negative. But I'm washing my hands and I'm like, no way. Mm, I think I'm pregnant. And I like finish my stuff and I turn around and there was a second line. <laughs> there is a, there are two lines on my pregnancy test. First time ever. Um, and this is the first day of my period. So this would literally be Thirteen days after I ovulated, and I, I sit in the bathroom for like a minute, and I'm like, just be I. I don't even know. Like I still, when I 
think back to the day, I'm just like, what? <laughs> like, that worked? I'm pregnant? Is this, is this for real? That's literally, that was the only test I took that day. It, it really was. I took another test the next morning. <laughs> um, I, what I wanted it to do so bad if he wasn't home or if I waited to take the test until the weekend and I saw that I was pregnant, I would have gotten this cute shirt. My husband plays video games and I would have like made the shirt that said new player added, unlocked or whatever. And I was like, I was in the bathroom. I was like, do I wait? Do I wait and do something cute? Or do I just say screw it because it's been two and a half freaking years and I got my first ever positive pregnancy test. I take the test, I put it in my hand, I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm going to figure something out. And I go downstairs with the craziest, silliest, like, smile on my face. And I go to him, and the test is, like, behind my hands. So I'm like, pick a hand. He's like, left hand. I had it in my right. I'm like, pick the other hand. <laughs> he had no idea what was going on. I asked him, and he's like, no, I, I did not think that was going to be it. So I put the test down in front of him, and the poor thing's like, are you ovulating? <laughs> no any like read like it says pregnancy test like read it. he's like you're pregnant um yeah we had a little moment and we just we went on with our day you know I then that was at like it was like 4 30 and I went to call my doctor and they didn't get back to me till the next day I was like oh my god um so I took a pregnancy test the next morning. It came out positive. I, I took like a first response test then. And it came back positive. And the next day my nurse, my infertility nurse called me and she's like, can you come in for to get blood work done today? We need to get a little extra blood work done. It's just what we do if you've had trouble conceiving. So can you come in you know, 48 hours later? They check my progesterone. Uh, it's also fuzzy now. I don't even know. I did. Um... I did do a note. Oh, I also forgot to mention, I apologize, another symptom that I felt was my boobs were sore, so sore. And my boobs and, and nipples tend to be a little bit sore before my period's supposed to come. They swell a tiny bit, but nothing too crazy, but it was so weird. And my left nipple specifically was a little bit TMI, but it started like pulsating at one point this was before I took the test or thought I was pregnant it was I think it was like on the day or the day after that I um implanted but that was in my head too I was like this is literally what I'm pregnant for but I, I didn't say anything um so I got my blood work done and everything was good my progesterone was hundred and something is that what she said yeah and uh that was on Friday afternoon that I got my blood work done and I was supposed to go in again on Sunday to get it done on Saturday Saturday March 6th literally two days after I find out I'm pregnant I woke up at about 4 50 a.m having to pee so bad naturally my husband was at work because he had to go to work that day on Saturday um I felt normal everything was fine and I went to go pee and before I could even like get my pants down I felt like a little trickle in my underwear and I was like oh my god like hold it and it's dark, it's 4.50 a.m., it's a Saturday, I just finished my first week of work, like, in my, my new job, and I only had, like, my flashlight on from my camera, because I wanted to go back to bed, I didn't want to turn the light on, but it's also my first pee of the day, and I was going to check to see if I was pregnant, so I had my first response test there, I peed in a cup, um, I put the cup down, I grabbed my phone with my flashlight to stick the test in, and the cup is full of blood. And I look down in my underwear, and there's blood spots, and there's a couple spots on my floor. And I start shaking. And I'm like, 
this cannot be happening. This cannot be, ha I literally just found out this can't be happening. Um, I take the test anyway. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm not gonna dump it. I, I'm taking the test and the test came out very positive. And I call my husband, it's literally 4.50, he like has to start working at five. And I'm like, I just, I woke up to go pee and I peed blood. And he's like, what? And I'm like freaking out and shaking. He's like, you have to call the doctor. So first time pregnant, you know, I call my doctor is in a different hospital. It's a little bit further away. And they like, they work with another hospital kind of, it's like in a different branch of the hospital the big hospital that does have an emergency room and everything but I live literally a walking distance away from a different hospital acute care urgent care was not open I was freaking out but I I didn't feel like I was having a miscarriage because I heard it was painful I heard it was a lot of blood I heard everything but I was I was confused and I mean, freaked out, obviously. You don't want to find out you're pregnant and then wake up peeing blood. So I called the emergency room of the hospital that I'm closest to, and I'm like, I just found out I was pregnant a couple days ago. I woke up to pee, and I peed blood. And I was so irritated. So the lady was like, well, do we have a doctor here? No. My doctor's in a different hospital, and they don't have an emergency department. Little did I know, honest. Like I'm, I'm not gonna lie. Like on it, like my OBGYN. I don't know. I didn't look into it. Maybe it's silly. I'm, I'm young. The first time I'm dealing with this, it's a lot of this stuff is not talked about, people, and it's so irritating. So she's like, just like calm and whatever, and she's like, I would suggest calling that hospital and talking to the twenty four hour nurse and seeing what they say. And then I'm like, okay. And in my head, I'm like, are you okay? I told you I'm pregnant. I'm peeing blood. Like, hi. Let's have a little more like rush. So I call my hospital, the twenty four hour line. The lady, the nurse that answers, is older you can you can tell by her voice she's older and she's kind of like stuttering over you know, you know tripping over her words she's stuttering and taking her time and I'm like freaking out like tell me and she's asking me all these questions it's 4 15 in the morning I just woke up I'm in a daze I still don't have the bathroom lights on and she's like are you um is it a lot of blood? And I'm like, I, I don't know. It looks like a lot to me, but I peed in a cup that's like this big, this wide. And it was very watery and it was bright red. And I was like, I really don't know. It's like mixed with pee. It's bright red. She's like, is there any pain? And I'm like, no, no pain at all. And I'm talking on the phone with her on the speaker and I'm sitting on the toilet and I'm wiping myself. And each time I wipe myself, there's less and less blood. And she's like, okay, well, put a pad on and, you know, just rest. Um, our acute care does not open until 8 a.m., but I would suggest going there when they do open. I'm like, it, I have to wait three hours. So I'm like, okay. Um, by the time I got off the phone with her, it was like a 10 minute talk not even she asked me so many questions and it was really hard to answer because I'm like dazed um so I call my husband back and I tell him what she said it's like okay you rest you relax I'm like can you come home I don't want to I, I can't do this by myself I don't know what's happening I don't I don't know anything and he's like just rest you know like keep track of what's happening and We'll, we'll see. And I'm like, okay. So I got off the phone with him. I think I went to lie down and I drank a bunch of water because I'm like, I have to go pee again. Like I, I have to test again. <laughs> and I didn't clean anything up. And I drank water and 10 minutes later to go pee again. 
wimpy again, um, there was no blood this time, right? If there was, it was like a very little bit, and it was just like a light pink. Oh, she also asked me what if it was like brown or bright red, it was bright red. And then I started cleaning up, and I go to dump out the cup that I peed in, and there was clumps at the bottom of it, which I didn't see. I finally turned the light on. I didn't have the light on still. And then I really start freaking out. I'm like, why are there clumps? Why are there clumps at the bottom of my peed in cup? And I, I text my husband because I think he's like at work, but like working right now. And I'm like, there's clumps at the bottom of my of my cup and he's like call the doctor again so I call this lady it was maybe like not even 15 minutes after and I'm like there's clumps at the bottom of my of my cup it, it, does that mean anything and I think she was kind of annoyed she was she was just like okay go to the emergency room <laughs> I'm like lady you are a nurse you rem I literally talked to you 10 minutes ago like, you asked me if this is my first kid. I told you, yes, I don't know what's happening or what is going on. I can't explain it to you because I'm in shock. I'm literally alone right now. Don't be annoyed with me. Then I text my husband because I'm freaking out. I'm like, I think I'm having a miscarriage. Even though, like, at the same time that I was thinking the worst in my head, I was like, I'm, I'm not. I felt very, very, very calm and okay but also freaking out at the same time it was a very weird feeling and at the mention of that word my husband's like okay go to the emergency room I will be off I'm like I'm not going anywhere until you get here I maybe took one or two more tests I just took the little um test that came with my ovulation kit because I was out of like fancy first response tests because I only had two left and um I took it and they were they were positive they were a faint positive so I started freaking out and then I read that if you drink too much water it could dilute <laughs> the levels I don't know but they did still come out positive so I wasn't entirely freaking out because the pregnancy test it doesn't matter how dark the line is as long as there's a second line you're still pregnant <sighs> my husband comes home at 6 a.m. we go to the emergency room I explain everything um, there was literally no blood after, no blood, no pain, no nothing, just the usual, like, dull cramping that I've been having, and there was honestly nothing that the emergency room can do that was, a, like, same company, I don't know, that my OBGYN, um, works for at the other hospital um so they had all my information but I was according to my app four weeks and two days even though I am pretty sure it was like a week and two days like <laughs> from the time I would have um implanted or two weeks and two days from ovulation I I know they don't count it like that but like it was really early and four weeks it's too early to see anything on an ultrasound I think which they told me and they're like the best we can do right now is take your blood again. So in less than two days, in 14, a little, 15, 15 hours, I had eight vials of blood taken out of me. <laughs> um, I felt a little bit nauseous here and there since I found out I was pregnant. Um, no throwing up, um, but I would get bouts of nausea and it really came on like mostly at night and especially if I like didn't eat or drink anything. Um, and so we were in the emergency room for about two hours total. We got there about like 6.15, we left a little after eight o'clock. And, um, obviously, you know, they got the first part taken care of right away. They, um, took my blood out and, you know, for those labs to get done, it took about an hour and they came 
back, the doctor came back and she was like, your HCG levels, they were at like 150 something yesterday. They're at 250 now. It's only been, like I said, like 14 hours. So they are going up, which tells us you are still pregnant and that's really good. Um, just, you know, go home and rest. Don't lift over 10 pounds. Um, and just be pregnant. And I tried to ask her all these questions, and I'm like, well, if it was a miscarriage, would, would, my, would my numbers go down right away? And it's so hard for them to say anything, obviously, because every situation is so different, and et cetera, et cetera. But the entire time we were in the hospital, I was talking to my husband, and I was like, if it is a miscarriage, it is so early, we've only known for two days, and we got two positives. We got a positive ovulation. And we got a positive test. We know that I ovulate <laughs> and I can get pregnant. If this ends how we would not like it to end, I think we'll be okay because we know we can do it. But I also, like I said, felt this weird, calm sensation that it was okay. And think like thankfully it was a weekend and I could just rest for the next two days. Um, and we went home and I rested. I did not have, I did not pee out any more blood or anything like that. I had very little spotting. Um, like the, every like other time I went pee for the next couple of hours. Very little light pink, nothing crazy. And nothing since then. Thank God. God, knock on wood, like, as calming as it was and as accepting as I would have been of it, um, it was the most awful thing that I have <laughs> went through in my life, um, and from first, like, like, ever since I had ovulated and, like, felt that implantation that I thought it was, but I didn't, like, let myself think it was, I was, I just felt so calm and good. I did not feel anxious. Like, I felt the best that I've ever felt in my life ever since that Saturday. This was a week ago today now, because I am filming on March 13th. This was a week ago today. I have felt calm, but I am so anxious and nervous and terrified of everything. Ever since then, I think if I never had that, um, I would be way more calm, I think. Um, and I am going to put some, like side notes here. Um, I do have pain when I'm on my period um, for like a day or two in the middle of it. Sometimes I can get through my day. Sometimes I need ibuprofen. Um, it can get really bad. When I was a child, it would like take me out of school. Like I was sitting at my school like hunched over and I couldn't do it. I have not been diagnosed with endometriosis. Um, as I mentioned in my HSG test video, that was a next step option was to get tested for that to see if that was the case. My um, uterine lining is a little bit thinner, nothing that any of my doctors were really too worried about and it did thicken. Um, you know, after ovulation, um, they really tracked that when I was on Clomid previously. Um, so I, d I don't know. I've not been diagnosed with PCOS or anything like that. So I don't know. Sometimes um, after intercourse, and I honestly can't time it or anything, rarely, but it did happen a few times where I would bleed after intercourse. So I don't know if, you know, my insides are just very sensitive. But just like I said, thank God, nothing. Um nothing after that. And I have tested every day since. All the tests came out positive. I got pure blue digital tests. Um, 
and after that I started testing basically every other day just to make sure even though nothing was happening I was like I have to make sure um and yeah that's that's where we are now um I am according to my app five weeks and two days today um we have not told anybody Ryan had to tell a couple of his co-workers because of what happened last week. Um, he's very bad at, like, leaving and just <laughs> leaving them high and dry. And I was like, I do not effing care. If you tell them what is going on, tell them and get the heck out of there. So they know. Um, and then my work knows because um, I actually have an ultrasound scheduled for next Thursday. Um at six weeks and so I had to tell them that I have to leave work a little early to go to that so they know um, but family does not know yet um, we're very excited to tell them also very nervous we can't decide when to tell them we might tell them after next week just very close family um, yeah um, I so yes I am having an ultrasound at six weeks that is when the nurses scheduled it and I think it is because we had trouble conceiving for so long especially being so young we just want to make sure everything is okay I really hope that I'm far enough along that they can see the baby and they can see the heartbeat um the heartbeat was supposed to have formed this week um if I'm tracking it right and I really hope it is um so that they can you know see it and measure it and everything yeah we are both we are very excited um and I think that's I think that's where we are we haven't bought anything yet I did start our baby registry this is our first baby we need a lot of things um the main thing that I did get was a first time pregnancy journal I that was something that I really really wanted um just to like keep track and it also has um like tips and tricks on what to do during each trimester and you know from weeks one to four etc I will tell you guys what it is if I can find it on here The book is called, I got it off Amazon, it was only $10, First Time Mom's Pregnancy Journal. Um, I will link it in the description bar as well if you guys would like to see it. It has places for um, ultrasound pictures, it has places for baby bump pictures. Um, it You can write, it's basically like a journal. Uh, you can write down the first person you told, the first weird craving you had. Um, the first time you saw your baby, it has little like journal excerpts, it tells you how big your baby is, um, you can write down your prenatal appointment dates, it's really, really, really nice, I highly recommend it, of course I've only been using it for a little bit, but I flipped through the pages and I absolutely love it. Um, and then we did also literally just buy some onesies that we're just going to use to tell people with, one says new to the cousin club because I'm an only child so we're gonna use that to show like my aunts and uncles um we have a hello grandma and grandpa shirt or onesie um just cute stuff like that I will probably post a video of that stuff um yeah so I guess I'll leave you guys with some of the symptoms that I'm feeling um like I said I'm week five two days along um so month two has started seven more to go um i am feeling cramping in my uterus um nothing like really bad just like dull on and off 30 seconds every few minutes just expanding um i'm not getting up and throwing up yet i think that's because honestly for my entire life I have been terrified of vomiting and I've done everything that I could to you know not do it but I do like sometimes I wake up really dizzy and nauseous and I 
the more I eat, the better I feel. So I don't know if it's necessarily morning sickness or my best friend and my husband and I, before I even got pregnant, have had thoughts that I could be, is it hypo, hyper, hypoglycemic? Um, or if you don't eat, you get really low blood pressure. Um, or high, I don't know. When you don't eat, you get dizzy. What is that? Um, so I don't know which one it is. I haven't talked to my doctor yet. <laughs> so I, I don't know a thing. Um, but I do, I do get like feeling kind of sick. Um, it happens more so at night, thankfully, because I work during the day. So if it's at night, I can just rest and sleep through it. Thank goodness. Um, fatigue, a lot of fatigue. <laughs> I can sleep all the time. The best thing ever right now, I used to never be able to sleep. I go to bed and I fall asleep before my husband, you guys. It's the best thing. He was complaining the other day. He's like, you fall asleep and you fidget and it's just hard for me to like go to sleep. And I'm like, welcome to the last six years because we've been living together for six years. Like, welcome to my life. Um, shortness of breath. Definitely have that. Um, sore boobs. They are large and in charge, and they hurt my friends. If I ever, like, feel like, uh, am I still feeling any symptoms? I'm just going to go like, uh, yep, yep, they hurt. Yeah. Um, yeah, and a headache here and there, and peeing all the time. Those are my symptoms. I am very, 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 very lucky. Um, there are a few women actually in my family who have had, like, no pregnancy systems, and they've had very successful pregnancies. Um, yeah. I think that's all I have for today. I have tried to give you all the information that I could. Um, is there anything else that I can think of? There's not. We have to make room for the baby. We have a lot of stuff we have to move around. We started updating the house, so there's a lot that needs to be updated. My husband's like, we have seven months to go. I'm like, that's not a lot. <laughs> it seems like a lot, but in like the grand scheme of things with how much we have to do, that's not a lot. It was really funny because we we're planning a trip to go to Disney World this year. I've never been, and I am obsessed with Disney. And we were planning to go. We had, like, the dates set and everything. We just had to, like, book it. And we were going to do that literally soon. And as we were planning it, I was like, you know what? We're going to get this thing planned, and this will be the year that I end up pregnant because I decided to go to Disney World. <laughs> and here we are. <laughs> Not that I couldn't still go, but you know, can't ride all the rides and everything. So it'll be even better because in the future we'll be able to go with my baby. I am very happy. Um, I don't know if anyone else has done this, but I had, I think I've mentioned this in a previous video, that I had plans. I had, I had wants of how I wanted my life to work out. So I wanted to have at least one kid by 25. And I wanted to have another one on the way by 27. And I turned 27 last year. It was the hardest birthday of my life to go through. Because I wanted to have a baby. And I know you can't plan anything. I know that. And I was like, are you serious? This is, <laughs> if you had asked me ever, what is, what do you want the most in your life? I just want to be a mom. And... You know, I turned 27 and I didn't have that, but I am now 27 and I am pregnant. I really, though, if you have already had a child and you've already went through a pregnancy, please tell me what the hardest time was for you um, because I think I can handle the physical pain of, you know, the third trimester and carrying the baby. I heard second trimester is great. I just want to get to the point of seeing my belly grow and feeling my baby move because other, I mean, the thing that I look most forward to is feeling lightheaded, nauseous, and feeling the cramping every few minutes. If I am like not paying attention to my body and I'm doing my work and I'm like, it's been 10 minutes, I haven't felt cramping, sit, pay attention, 
There it is. Okay. Okay. We're good. We're good. Like, I do not like being pregnant, but not feeling pregnant. Give me the big belly. Give me the kicks to the ribs. Give me that <laughs> so I can feel a little, little tiny bit more okay, you know? But yeah, this video is 15 minutes long. I will leave you guys at that. Um, should I do a baby bump? I don't have one. This is just my tummy, I think. This is my, um, my tank top. But maybe a little bit right here. I don't even know. I'm sucking in, so. I'm only, like I said, I'm only five weeks and two days, so there's, like, nothing there, but. Yeah. There's my video. I had to do something to make myself feel a little bit more pregnant other than buy those cute onesies and stuff. So if you guys have any comments, leave them in the box below. If you have any um, questions or things that you would like mention or anything, leave that in the um, comments below. If you have any video suggestions of things you would like me to do, leave that in the comments below. I will have hauls and updates and lots of stuff coming up. Like I said, today is March 13th when I'm filming this. I am five weeks and two days. I'm probably not going to upload this until after 12 weeks. So another seven weeks to go. I will put in the description box how far I am when I um, upload the video so that you guys know. But yeah. Thank you so much for watching. I am excited to film more videos and get this journey rolling, get our nursery started, start telling our family and just really doing all the pregnancy stuff and feeling pregnant. So right now we're just in a hurry up and wait limbo mode and I hate it so much, <laughs> so much. Um, yeah, thank you guys for watching and I will see you guys very soon in a new video. Bye.